Hello, it's Jimmy Hurdle Harleys and today we're just doing a simple one. It's a full engine service on a 1.6 HDI. Uh, this is the same fitted in most vehicles, Peugeot 308. Ford Focus, uh, all that sort of stuff. So it's basically going to be the same procedure for all of those cars. But uh, in this case it's on a Citroen C4. So here we have some of the service kits. We have here air filter fuel filter from blueprint oil filter and a cabin filter so all of this stuff here is blueprint this is the my go-to brand if i'm gonna pick one um but in this case for this filter here this is sorry the cabin filter one uh, they didn't have that in the blueprint so only a wix available for that one so we're gonna get all these changed over so the first thing i'm gonna do is when i come to the engine bay is pull on these little rubber tabs here pull them up now sometimes these are quite stiff, these were quite stiff, I had to give quite a pull in to get these off just a few minutes ago. But what I've done is spray them with a little bit of copper grease so they slip on and off nice and easy. So inside this box here we have the air filter for the engine. Over here we have the fuel filter and we have just down here, where are we? We need to get rid of these pipes but the oil filter is just behind there so if we come across to this pipe here press these little tabs and then pull that out and then it just pulls out from the other side as well now once you've got this pipe out of the way we can see the oil filter there it is just there what I'm gonna do is leave the oil filter to last I'm gonna do the easiest one first which is the air filter then I'll do the cabin filter while my hands are clean ish and then we'll move on to the fuel filter then the oil so for the air filter you have three t20 torques here so just get those opened up so once i've got all three of those loosened up on this particular model over here we have another little clip just in here just reach my finger in there pop that off now we should be able to lift this up and hopefully we can get this out without removing the whole airbox. Most of these cars you can, but of course they're fitted in all different types of cars. There you go, we've got that out. So now we can just put our hand in here, lift out this air filter. And we'll get our hands in there, any big sort of pieces that we find in there, just chuck them out. Now we have the blueprint air filter here. There's the numbers for it. So we're gonna get this out. That's the replacement and that's just the same procedure in reverse there just push that back in and just make sure that it sits flush all the way around in the little recess now if we come down the back you can see there's two holes there and they need to be paired up to these little bits that stick out so let's slide her in and make sure that they lock into place you've got a little tab over here as well look that just slots in there so you know it's locked into place so you know you've got it in the right area and you can just feel when the back of it's locked in because you can feel it click in just need to wiggle it around now that's locked in give it a bit of a pull you know it's um try lift the back end up that doesn't move now so it's locked down just got to make sure that the rear end of it is in locked into those tabs now we just tighten back down these screws so now that's done we'll move on to the cabin filter before we get our hands oily and full of diesel open this up now we've got that out we need to come under here just under there you can see a black plastic panel on the right side there's a little tab pull that and grab the handle in the middle and just give it a pull might be a little bit tight but you can pull it out so you undo the tab from here pull it out and it's just on little clips there so you just need to give it a good pull then we can come back down under little flap should pull down there so you can grab it and just pull it out you can see the state of this one 
let's get that swapped over for a new one. Now again, you'll have the same little tab there on the front of this filter and it points downwards there, you can see. So again, we'll just slip that back in into place there. And then I said, just push the plastic cover back on there. Make sure it's all clicked in all the way along. And that's fine. Now we're going to move on to the diesel filter here, or fuel filter, 8mm. And we need to get those in there on top of that little plastic housing of the fuel filter there. You've got two 8mm bolts on this, this particular car here. Just open these up. So you've got one there, and then one just here. So what is worth mentioning is before I'm undoing this filter I did have the car running for about 10 minutes just to get the engine oil warmed up. It makes it a little bit easier to get the oil out, it comes out a bit faster and it just makes it a better job. So the engine is hot now. Now we've got both of those bolts there loosened up, they're just sticking up their captive nuts. So now we just need to disconnect the fuel lines. Um, we have one here that we just need to get a little pick under or a flat screw door, whatever really, just just lift that little plastic tab up, then you can squeeze the two of them and pull it out. Disconnect it from here, it's locked into a little tab there, to stop you from pulling it. So now we just disconnect these, so that's that one out. Next one, press down the white tab and pull it out, it's a little bit hard to do it with one hand. There you go, that's the second one, third one. So push forward, press the tab down, then pull back. Just like that. Now hopefully we can uh, slide this out without removing any of this plastic housing at the top here. There we go. Now if you can, hold the fuel filter on something like this. I've got a little step here to hold it. But uh, there is three... Uh, T15 little torque bolts here that we need to open. Let's press it down on these. It's got one, two, and three here. And you do want to have a little tray underneath it because it's it's going to spill a lot of fuel. So we'll open these up. screws out. Screws are loose. This one here I can't get it out because the little plastic sensor here is in the way so we just twist that sensor and keep twisting it all the way around until it pops up a little bit. Um, now this sensor needs to be pulled out really. They say it can be quite stiff. You just need to try and pull it out all the way up. Just give it a little work, work it around. Left and right, just try to wiggle it up. Now, if you have something like this, a little pry tool works very good for this sort of stuff. Just pop it under it, and that pops it out. Just from underneath there. So, when you pop that out, you're going to get fuel like this coming out from underneath. That seal is a big long stick, it seals down the bottom here. Now we should be able to separate the top and bottom. Got that one screw that's left because the sensor was blocking it there. So we'll get that out. And you can see there, that's the sensor from the top. Now we'll get the new filter back in here. Just the new filter goes back in in the same way. You just slide it over and line up the three three little screw holes there like that. Get your screws back in. So here we have the new filter. So we just need to sit that little gasket there in there, and you just need to make sure that that doesn't move when you're uh, sitting the the top on the top section. So we're going to sit the top section back over here. 
and you just need to line that up again with the screw holes like I said so you can see the screw holes there line up in the inside while that's on you need to just lift it back up just make sure that this gasket hasn't moved because if that gasket's moved then you will have a leak push that down nice and tight there and we can get the screws back in just get these screws all tightened back in now we need to push this center piece back down try and push it down a level though you don't want to press down too much on this end because you'll snap it we need to sort of press it down right in the center and then get it to twist down so it locks back into place it can be quite stiff just twist it around until you get it pushed in and then obviously we just turn that back in so it's locked into place there now it's just a case of working it back into where it was sitting you see the wiggle stuff around a little bit these holes are a little bit flexible just push it in and sit back down in there Exactly in the same position where it came from. Connect back up your hoses. One, two, and three. Push back down the tab. That locks it into place there. Now we can just get the eight mil bolts back in. Just get these tightened back up. Now just on top of the filter there you can see there's a little black push down uh, pump. This is a primer pump basically. Now normally I just disconnect one of these hoses and use my, my own hand primer pump just to get the fuel up. But obviously if you haven't got one of these this is what you need to do here. just need to keep pumping this. It takes a, a long time, about five minutes of pumping and you'll feel it get stiffer gonna keep pumping it keep pumping it so once you've pumped that a fair few times you can feel it just it gets a little bit stiffer and it starts getting stuck and we should have the job done ready to start it so get inside turn the ignition on start it up what I like to do is hold the revs at about 2000 for about 60 seconds just to make sure there's no air in it and it's not gonna cut out And we're happy with that we can just switch the engine off so I've just put a torch down here on the oil filter so you can see it so you can use a 27 millimeter socket just to get down onto it and we'll just crack it open you can use a little uh, cloth if you've got one just to sit under it so you can catch any sort of drips that come off it and we can carry on and doing the rest of it Now I can feel that's loose because it's wobbly, but we're just going to let it sit there for a minute so any of the oil just sort of drains off any excess. And once about a minute or so is just uh, passed, we can then just slowly pull it out. We didn't actually get any drips at all there from that. That's the filter. So we've just pulled the old filter out of the housing there that that sat in. Now we've got the new filter. We're not going to put that in the housing. What we're going to do is come down to the filter itself. Let me see if I can get the camera down there and then angle for you. So you'll see a little recessed hole. I see it on the camera. Basically, we need to sit this filter in and locate that into the little hole that that sits in. This little tab here. So if 
I just put my hand in there and if I sorry I had the camera in the wrong place if I spin the cam spin the oil filter you'll feel it sort of drop then spin it around until you feel it drop into place and then just push it and it'll click into place there now we can get the lid or housing uh, yeah lid, cover whatever you'd like to call it uh, just slide that onto place and now screw it in give it a couple of turns by hand just sort of get it into place and then we can get the socket under socket down we're just gonna push it downwards as we're tightening so it grips Takes quite a few turns to get it down. That's it, it's tight enough to make it stop basically. Now we can get these little air inlet pipes back into place. Just push that in, push it in, click it into both ends. Get the engine cover back over there and sit it back in the little tabs where it came from. Pop, pop. Sorry, I was over here. Just pushing back on the engine cover. Now we just need to drain the engine oil and put the new engine oil in. So what I'd normally do is locate from underneath which side the drain plug is at. So if the drain plug is on the right side of the oil stump, I'm gonna jack it up from the left side so the car is tilting in that direction. Now we've got the car raised up, we just slide a axle stand under the subframe and let that hit there at the top. So now we're going to open the oil sump 21mm socket just to crack that open. Give it a couple of turns. Now you can open that by hand or if you've got one of these little magnetic sticks it just locks onto place there onto the side of the sump plug. And you can twist her out as long as it's not too tight come on and you don't have to get your fingers dirty so we just let that oil drain now these usually take anywhere from about 3.8 liters to 4.2 usually so but whoever you're buying your oil from um when we use our part suppliers gsf or bennett's we just give them the carriage and they check on the auto data system for us it takes you know four liters and 5w30 oil once we've slowed down to a little trickle we'll put a half liter of clean oil in the top just to flush that out and that'll just push any of the excess old oil out So again, we're going to wait until that half litre is drained out again. That's it, we'll tighten it back up with the magnet stick and pull that off. Get back on there with the ratchet. Give it a little bit of a wipe up. So now that's all back together underneath, we've put the car down a little and we'll put our four litres of oil in here. So, what I'd normally do if something takes four litres, for instance, or it takes six litres, if something takes four litres, I'll put in 3.5, then check the dipstick, add another 100 millimetres. Uh, and so forth. Just uh, add a hundred mil at a time and keep checking your dipstick until you get it right. Now, of course, having new oil in, when you pull the dipstick out, it's going to be pretty difficult to see. So, what we will do is just run the, run the engine for about 30 seconds and that oil will turn black again. Put the oil cap back on. Start the engine there. 
Now also by running the engine you're going to let the oil filter fill back up so that will help you get the correct oil level as well. So we can check the oil again. Now the engine's been running we just turned it off. Now you can see there you can already see the level of the oil again and you can see it's black already. So maybe another 100 mil or so should what people don't understand is yeah 3.8 liters has got to there but to get from here to there could be only a case of another 100 mil or so so we'll add another little 100 mil of oil into there now we'll give that about a minute to let it soak its way down then we'll check it again, push it all the way down, give it, I like to give it a little turn, and then pull it back up. And we are about spot on there. If you can see that, get that focus. So we're about a, two notches from the top, which is perfectly fine. And that's just another question for people. Um, you know, does the oil be black as soon as you change it you can see that's brand new oil it's run for less than a minute in the engine and it's almost as black as it was before we changed it if you want to get your oil looking clean in a diesel engine what i'd need to do here is drain that oil again and refill it maybe two or three times you'll get that oil looking clean but again it won't last long a couple of hundred miles or so you'll start seeing it coming black again so that's it on this one Engine is all serviced, cabin filter, air filter, fuel filter and oil filter. That's it, we will see you on one of the next videos.